All right, YouTube. In the last few days, the uh, Craigslist killer case has taken uh, a sort of pseudo 1980s satanic panic turn, uh, and you can start to see it now just beginning to hit the mainstream media. Of course, it's been in the works for several days here, but now it's hitting like Fox and CNN and these groups. Uh, Miranda Barber, of course, she and her husband, uh, she's the Craigslist killer uh, talked about here. Uh, she went on Craigslist and, and essentially put an ad on there to say, oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll give you uh, sex, essentially, in exchange for money, and then killed the guy that showed up. Uh, apparently, the original story was she and her husband wanted to kill somebody together. Uh, now, her new line, and this is why I can comment on this, because she's now changed her story, is, I was a member of a satanic cult, and now she's telling the authorities she's killed at least 22 people. Um, this is straight out of the 1980s satanic panic playbook. Let me explain to you a few things. First about mainstream Satanism, then about cults and what she's saying, and also about the, the sort of reason why somebody would claim this. First, to actual Satanist groups, the Church of Satan, uh, the United Satanic Empire, any of these groups, Killing is not, neither condoned nor encouraged, first and foremost. In fact, it's condemned uh, explicitly in Anton LaVey's book, which governs the actions of most uh, people in the Church of Satan. Most independent Satanists have either read that book and adhere to it somewhat, or they're certainly not killers. Uh, they're not interested in sacrificing people to the devil or any of these things. There's no evidence she was ever a member of any sort of satanic religious order, as far as the, the actual Satanist orders that exist. Um, she's certainly not going on YouTube and looking up my kind of material. She's not, go, she's not going to meetings with the Oklahoma Satanists that are putting up the monument. She's not doing any of these things. So first, to people who might be concerned about this case, uh, this, if she was a member of any sort of so-called satanic cult, it wouldn't be any of the atheistic philosophical Satanist movements because they all condemn such behavior. Uh, they condemn animal abuse, too. In the satanic panic, you had all of these people who said, well, I killed this cat for Satan. I killed this teenager for Satan. I raped this baby for Satan. I made this, this arm bone tool uh, to consecrate this to Satan. And it never made any sense to anyone within the satanic community because they don't actually do these things. And of course, the conspiracy theorists, and you see the same thing with any group that is shadowy or has supposedly secret teachings, uh, you see outsiders assume the worst about what they're doing ritually. They assume the worst about their character, even though, at least in the case of most satanic groups, they're completely above board. You can buy their books on eBay. Uh, written by their founders or members or whatever. You can buy their music on eBay. You can go on YouTube and see them speaking about things. Uh, it's completely above board, even more so than what you would see with something like the, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, and yet they get blamed anytime someone, you know, supposedly kills 22 people. As to cults, here's how I can logically infer that she wasn't actually a member of a cult. She said herself, very recently, she only killed bad people. If it were a violent, murderous, human-sacrificing, satanic cult that was actually worshipping a Christianized version of the devil, you would think the opposite would be true, and she'd be killing good people. She'd be killing choir boys and nuns and things like that. But no, here she's saying herself she's killing bad people negative people, people who are sinful and evil. That doesn't sound like she was a member of a satanic cult. In fact, it sounds more like she was a church-going individual uh, who became fanaticized, uh, who became a fanatic at the behest of some, I don't know, megachurch pastor or something, which uh, probably also isn't the case. Now let's look at the reasons. Both in the past, during the actual satanic panic, which lasted from about the mid-1980s to about the early 1990s, it's a Google moral panic and you'll learn all about it. Uh, and most of those cases were never substantiated either. Uh, many of the people who were indicted at the time were let go of because there was simply no evidence they had done anything wrong. Those that had, there was no evidence that they were a member of any satanic organization. Um, why would somebody claim satanic cult? as a motive for killing. I can tell you why. 
because they're hoping that by claiming that one of two things will happen. Either they'll get labeled a, a psychopath and they'll be put in a mental ward, which means they're not going to get the death penalty. They're not even going to get life in prison. They're going to be thrown in the nut ward, which is a lot more comfortable and a lot more easy to deal with than the sort of prisons that you go to for being a murderer. So it's cushy compared to what you get, and you can potentially in the future, if the psychiatric community says, oh, well, they were messed up when they came in here, even though they're faking it the whole time, but now they're acting, acting normal. The therapy has worked. The medication has worked. Uh, we should cut the sentence short and let him go, or put him on probation or something, or put him under, you know, you know, uh, outpatient treatment or something. And then they can go on and live normal lives, because they were never mentally ill to begin with. They were claiming this defense primarily because they knew that they could get the insanity plea through. Uh, and they've got a psychiatric evaluation going right on for both of these individuals. The second reason would be this. In the case that they're not declared insane, they're hoping that at the very least the jury will have a reasonable suspicion that maybe, yeah, maybe they were a member of a cult and it's really not their fault. They were told to do it. They were coerced into doing it. Uh, uh, you know, we could give them the death penalty, but let's give them life in prison instead uh, because we're not going to... The jurors don't want to feel responsible for killing a person, even if they're a murderer if they think that there's a good possibility that they were coerced into doing it. They'll, instead of throwing the book at her, uh, the judge will give her life, the jury will say, yeah, she's guilty, but we also, you know, we recommend life in prison because we're really not comfortable killing this person, and they'll do that. Then they get an even bigger bonus, because if they get life imprisonment, here's what they then do. And there were plenty of people who did this after using Satanist cult as a defense for their own crimes. They go in, and they're a big bad Satanist, and they act out for a couple of years. Then they reform. They say, well, I've found Jesus now. And Tex Watson, by the way, and, and here's the funny thing. Fox News was mentioning the, Man mentioning the Manson family as a satanic cult, which it never was. Uh, it never will be. Manson was never involved in Satanism. This is something people should get through their heads, but apparently can't, that Manson was <clears throat> more of a gang member than he was part of any cult whatsoever, uh, other than he did a lot of acid. Um, uh, these people will go in and then they'll find Jesus, just like Tex Watson's done, and, and he's tried to get out on that too after releasing his book, well, I was completely deluded and being force-fed pills and stuff. But I found Jesus now. It's okay. I wouldn't kill anybody now. I killed all people at both crime scenes before, but now I'm healed by the grace of Jesus. Yeehaw. That's what these people want. They can then say, well, I found Jesus now, ten years later. I'm a different person. I gave up the devil, which everyone still believes in, despite no evidence of the devil existing either. Uh, well, you should let me out, uh, you know, because I'm a good person now, and I'm ministering to other prisoners. Or at the very least, they can get a few little privileges in jail. Uh, they can maybe, you know, get a conjugal visit or something like that. Or something, or, you know, they can get the cell that isn't quite as, as leaky and, and drab and boring. They can have a few pictures and maybe library access. And they can live a, a marginally normal life. You know, the guards aren't going to beat up on them because they found Jesus now, so it would be politically incorrect to do it. That's what these people do. When these people back in the satanic panic, there were two classes. The first class of people were actual Satanists who were being persecuted under, under the idea that they had committed some sort of crime. Not one of these people was ever successfully prosecuted for even one of these crimes. Then you have the cases where Satanism or devil worship or witchcraft or something are blamed for crimes where there's no involvement whatsoever, where people have a vested interest in, in trying to use Satanism as a way to get their, ins their insanity plea to go through. You had one case where there was this kid who supposedly killed his mother. He supposedly killed her with a knife. Then, supposedly, he cut his own throat after also cutting his own wrist so far through the tendon that he probably couldn't even hold a knife by that point. And this was labeled a satanic crime. And you know, the father probably killed them both and then shed his crocodile tears afterwards. But supposedly, this little kid single-handedly disarmed his mother and killed her, and then slit his own wrists and throat, which is uh, 
probably physically impossible in the manner that they're talking about. And no one wants to talk about this case. Nobody wants to talk about Aquino or LaVey or any of these other people and the fact that all the crimes they supposedly committed, they never actually got thrown in jail for because there was never evidence. People were talking, fundamentalist families were talking about secret tunnels under the preschool, secret tunnels under the mental ward, secret tunnels everywhere, and, and pictures of Satan and, and rituals and orgies and child molestation and all of these things. There was never one corroborated case of this happening. It culminated in the most bizarre case where a Christian minister was abusing children in the church during Sunday school, and they called him a witch and a Satanist because they didn't want to deal with the fact that a good, pious Christian minister could harm children in that manner. Of course, in the modern age, because we've got the internet now and people are actually a little more, they have a little more common sense at least. Uh, in the modern age, of course, when a priest abuses a child, we don't immediately term them a witch or a Satanist. We say it's a priest that happens to be a pedophile who probably was drawn to the church because they thought they'd get forgiveness for having molested children in the past. And then they get thrown into Sunday school with a bunch of kids and they say, oh, well, this is a... Uh, a fortuitous event indeed. I can molest all the kids I want, and the Vatican will just pay to shuttle me around from parish to parish to continue raping more children. If you want to see real ritual murders, go over to Africa and see what the Christians do to people. See what the Muslims do to people. See what the Jews do every day in Israel to the Palestinians. If you want to see real mass murder, real genocide, and real insanity, go to those countries. You're not going to find it here with a bunch of supposed satanic cults that magically nobody can ever find out exist. And the conspiracy theorists will say, well, that's because they're underground. They've got connections within the government. They've got connections within the Roman Catholic Church. They're being sheltered by Masons and Illuminati. They've got underground chambers and they've got temples out in the forest that are buried in bunkers and things like that. It's ridiculous. They will do anything that they can to cast blame on Wiccans and Pagans and Satanists for the crimes that Christians, Muslims, and Jews are committing. You don't find instances very often where actual members of any satanic order, a real above-ground philosophical satanic order, even the theistic devil worshippers, don't have involvement with these kind of lunatics. You won't find examples in any modern literature where any of these cases has been successfully prosecuted because these groups either don't exist or they certainly don't tell their members to go out and kill good people, I mean uh, bad people, they're gonna tell them to go out and burn a church. And yeah, there are a small number of these little cults scattered around the world. If you really want to find these groups, you're not going to see them randomly killing people because then that would out their existence and cause them to be prosecuted. They're not dumb. They're going to hang out in the graveyard and, and role play that they're evoking uh, Satan. They're not going to go out and kill a bunch of people, and they're certainly not going to take a teenage girl to do it for them, who obviously isn't a lunatic. She was just a thrill killer who wanted to have a sexual arousal with her husband, killing somebody through Cra Craigslist. And that was her original and probably true story. This Satanist stuff is being tacked on after the fact, probably because she read a little bit of literature and said, oh, these people who claim Satanism, they never get killed for their crimes. They get thrown in the nut ward. And then eventually they get released and they go with their family and they live happily ever after knowing they killed somebody and got off because of the paranoia and superstition of at least one member of the jury, thinking that it's actually possible they were possessed by evil spirits in the commission of their crimes. It's a crock of shit. The public needs to know before another satanic panic is awakened here. No, real Satanist groups do not command their members to go out and kill. If you read the Satanic Bible or most associated literature with any of these Satanic groups, they're condemning killing and calling out Christians and Muslims for mass genocide and witch burning and things like these. Uh, no, this, this Miranda Barber woman is not a Satanist. She was probably never a member of any Satanic order. Uh, she's just lying through her ass, uh, claiming to have committed a bunch more crimes because then she can claim insanity. 
use Occam's razor here and really think about the which which explanation is more simple. She's just a complete psycho loony, uh, a mem former Satanist who butchered a bunch of people, and there was never she never got caught for 22 crimes, making her uh, a very prolific serial killer at a young age, being a young small rather small female. Or she's lying and she's actually pretty smart and she wants to get declared insane so she can go rest in the mental ward where she can get a nice bed instead of a little crummy cot and where she can be treated, she can get good food and fairly good care and people will continue to talk about her and then she can find Jesus and she can write books and make millions of dollars. The latter is true. Uh, no. This was not a satanic cult killing. There haven't been any satanic cult killings. The handful of cases where people are actually worshipping the devil and do this, they always seem to be uh, uh, kids that are obsessed with metal and start killing cats and so forth. And even those cases were overblown to the point where it became a moral panic. No, Miranda Barber is not a Satanist. She's not a devil worshipper. She's never been a member of any cult. Uh, I, I think that years from now people will understand this, but I'm sure right now the media will have a heyday, and they'll bring up Charles Manson too, just like they did a few minutes ago on Fox, uh, which will just reignite that again. It's literally the same exact thing as during the Satanic Panic. Manson, Satanists, mass murder. I'm sure they'll throw metal music in there. They'll say, oh, she started listening to Slayer, and then all of a sudden she started torturing animals. It's the same thing. Inoculate yourselves with the truth during this obvious coming time. I've been telling people for several years now, we are now re-entering the 1980s. Listen to the music, look at the clothing that people are wearing, look even the, the vehicle designs and the sort of colors people are decorating their homes with. It's the 1980s all over again. Bush was like Ronald Reagan. A little bit, you know kind of mentally retarded neocon, uh, very corporatist, very rich. Uh, Reaganite. That's exactly what's going on right now. We are now in the 1980s once again, which means we're going to get great music and we're going to get some really weird fashion, but we're also going to have to suffer through the bullshit where Christians say, eh, the Satanists are trying to indoctrinate our kids. Well, guess what? I don't want to indoctrinate your kids. Your kids will come to me anyway and ask me questions. Uh, I don't have to go out and seek your children uh, in order to try to proclaim Satanism to them. Uh, and they're going to read my books too. Probably. They'll be in the library or whatever, and the kid will pick it up and read it. They're going to do the same thing with dozens of other uh, figures within Satanism. It's not going to be stopped. And no, this time, I'm not going to go underground. A lot of the Satanists during the Satanic Panic said, fuck this, I'm going to get shot by some Christian, and they went underground. I'm not going to do that. I don't give a shit what you people believe. It doesn't matter to me. And I know I speak for many other Satanists that are more visible on the internet. We're not going to go anywhere. We're going to keep talking about these things. And this time you're not going to be able to overwhelm us with a bunch of media propaganda because guess what? People don't trust the media anymore like they did in the 80s. The soccer moms used to trust uh, CNN and Fox and all of these groups and they don't anymore because they're all a bunch of idiots. People have gotten past that point, I think, philosophically where they're able to uh, believe in this superstitious mumbo jumbo. This woman... This young girl, this teenager, is not a satanic spree killer. She's just a thrill killer with her husband that probably gets off on this shit. And she is insane by that token. So maybe you should throw her in the mental ward. But it shouldn't be because she was a member of a satanic cult and killed 22 people. I bet right now that you find zero evidence that she's killed anybody else. That this was a one-time event. This is her last-ditch effort to be declared mentally unfit to even stand trial so that she can go to a mental ward.